Okay, so um, my name is Susie Hockstrat, and my colleague um, Meredith Goebel is also in. Hello. <laughs> and we are the coordinators of MSJC's K-12 um, program partnerships, and we oversee and coordinate the dual enrollment, concurrent enrollment, and helping high school students earn college credit prior to high school graduation. So we were really excited that everyone was interested and able to come in. And we have a quick PowerPoint that we'll go over. If you ever have questions, um, you can put them in the chat or um, you can- I'll go ahead and put the email addresses friend. in there. Yes. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and let me know if you can see it. Yep, we can see it. Yep, we see it. Okay, perfect. So again, um, we're the K-12 Program Partnerships Coordinators and we are looking through the early college courses. And again, it's to provide an opportunity for high school students to complete college level coursework prior to graduation. It's a way to get ahead on your college transcripts and start really thinking about what and where you wanna be looking at your college and career for the future. And so we have multiple opportunities. Uh, we have dual enrollment, which is taught on the high school campus during the regular school day, typically by a qualified high school teacher that becomes a Mount San Jacinto associate faculty member. And so during the time that you're in that class, it is a college course, even though it's during the school day on the high school campus. So it's a good distinction to understand kind of when you walk through that door, even though it's third period with Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith is a college instructor at that time. And so you're in a, a college course. We have MSJC on campus classes. And so those are courses that are taught on the MSJC campus and they can be um, taken outside the school day. Uh, sometimes it's before, cause we do have 7.30 in the morning classes when we're back physically on campus right now. Um, all we have available at this time is the majority bulk of our classes are online. And those are courses that are taught through Canvas. And so they may be as a designated day and time, which is real time or synchronous learning, or they are opened up to any time courses or what is called um, asynchronous learning. And then we also, when we're back um, on campuses, we have an MSJC annex. And so those are courses that are typically taught on a high school campus, but outside of the high school location per se. And it's a designated set of classrooms that our students are um, able to um, take. And those are taught after the school day. And so again, reasons why to participate, it provides um, access to college level coursework. You complete, begin completing your general education needed for bachelor's degree, your career education courses needed for certificate, and it reduces the college costs for students and families because minus the fees, there isn't a tuition that is included because in the state of California, concurrent and dual enrollment students do not pay for the regular um, tuition. It improves the college credit rates for high school students. It provides, again, that opportunity for students to take them with students that they are used to seeing every day. And so they're able to you know, build study groups faster and have a, a stronger collaboration so that when they do go into the traditional college environment, they know how to set that up. Um, it reduces time to degree completion because our goal is to have students complete you know, three units in a semester or six units in the year. And hopefully where that you have nine to 12 units as a senior in high school already completed. And so for most schools that is one entire semester out of the way. And it 
typically the courses that we recommend or that we offer through dual enrollment are the introductory courses. They're the courses that are used to not only fulfill general education, but to also expand on things you could be interested in going into. And then it also helps students identify things that they aren't interested in. So for example, I took a chemistry 100 class in high school and I learned that that was not a path that I would be going down. So I was able to help my career plan a little earlier. And it also demystifies what college is because you are at that time a college student. So you start to learn the different languages that's used within college or college jargon. So when we are using terms like prerequisites, general education, what is kind of difficult for most students is when they go in, they're expected to know that type of, of language. And with dual enrollment and concurrent enrollment, you have the support of not only the high school, but the high school also has the support from Meredith and myself to help navigate you and the students through that expanding um, opportunity for them. And then what does it mean to take a college course? Mary, do you wanna go ahead and jump in on this slide? Um, go ahead, I'll wait until the student services part. Okay. Um, sometimes I just get, I always think people maybe get tired of hearing just my ramble through because we get really excited. So we talk real fast and kind of get really animated because we love um, for students to take college classes while they're still in high school. So what it means for a student to take a college class is you have to be responsible for your own success. You have to advocate for yourself and you have to realize if you're not being successful, you have to know where you should be going or what you should be doing. So with that being said, parents do not have access to the instructors. They cannot check in on you to see how they're doing. And so for some uh, parents, this is a struggle because their, their child is still a child. They're under the age of 18, but at the time that they go in, they are a, they're a college student and we're expecting them to have that maturity because we're looking at semester long courses. So they're faster courses. It is true college courses. Um, we don't change it because a high school student is in it. So the topics that are talked about in the class are relatable to the real life. They use real world languages that is used. So it's making sure that the student is ready for that type of, of exposure, as well as the parents. Because again, um, one topic that could be brought up could be something that your family does not discuss. And you want to make sure that you have that open dialogue already in place so that it doesn't become a problem in the future. And then these are the different ways on how to participate. So you have the ability to work with your high school counselor in regards to what classes to take. You complete the MSJC application um, and it's on msjc.edu and there's a big flashing um, button on the home page. and you complete the application and the orientation. When you're completing the application, you do not want to use a parent email, a family email, or a school email. So if you do not have one, you want to either get a Gmail, a Yahoo, or anything else um, that could be just a standard email like Susie Hogstrat at Gmail. So that's one thing to look at. And so I'm gonna go ahead and let Mayor go in to go over the parent school agreements. So um, a little bit on the application, we just wanna make sure that um, students are paying close attention to the, um, the dates that are on there because we do have applications opened year round. So we wanna make sure that you're applying for the correct term that you intend on, um, on taking courses with us. So if you are applying for 
the um, the fall of 2021 term, we want to make sure that the dates that are that are embedded in that application that you're um, answering the questions correctly. So if you are a sophomore this year and will be a senior, or I'm sorry, a junior next year, the questions on the application may differ from from um, the grade level that you're in. So we wanna make sure that you're paying close attention to that, as well as, um, as Susie said, we want you to use a personal email address. We do not want you using your school email address. And the reason being is one, um, our, our firewalls or the firewalls at the most high schools don't allow MSJC emails to come through on that. And we found that over the course of the last couple of years. So when students, um, complete the application, they're sent an activation email and they will not receive it nine times out of 10 if they use a school email address. That being one and the other one is that once students exit your high school after graduation, those um, email addresses typically have an expiration date on them. And so the students, we want them using a, a personal email address um, when they're completing the application as well as paying close attention to the residency questions that are on there. We want the students to be completing the application correctly with the um, correct information when it comes to residency. And if a student is flagged for residency and we need additional paperwork, an email will go out to the student in regards to what is needed after that. So we get a lot of military families, um, families that are here on visas. And so we will just um, require additional paperwork when it comes to some of those um, residencies. Um, the orientation will be completed after that the students um, submit the application. The orientation um, typically takes about 30 minutes. It's information in regards to the college that all students need to be aware of. Um, and students must complete that in order to receive a registration date and time. So high school students have uh, last prior priority registration at this time through MSJC. So for those students, we wanna make sure that they complete the process and are ready to go come registration time so that they have a better chance at getting into their classes if they're taking a course outside of dual enrollment. And then after they've completed the application and orientation, there's a school parent agreement form. And at the present time, we have um, two separate forms depending upon where the student is taking courses. So if a student is taking dual enrollment courses, there's one form. And if a student is taking anything else outside of dual enrollment, there's a separate form for that. We are looking at combining that form, but at this time it's two separate forms. And the form is completed, signed by the student, the parent or guardian, and the principal of the high school. And that also, um, students also need to have um, official transcripts before they can submit their form for um, approval and processing. Once their form is approved, the student will be told, um, contacted and told that, and then the student will be able to register come their date and time of registration. Is there any questions in regards to any of that information so far? Okay. Um, the school parent agreement form is currently online and we send out the link for that depending upon what's being offered at your site that may change in the fall 2021 semester to all be online um, through a system that we're looking at, at um, going into contract with, but that more information will come. Students that are taking courses through dual enrollment, which are offered on the high school campus with a high school instructor have a $6 transportation fee. They also have a $2 um, student representation fee as well as a $7 SGA um, fee. And the two fees of $7 and $2 can be opted out prior to registration through the student's uh, Eagle Advisor or self-service account. The students can opt out of those, but they have to opt out each term prior to the registration into classes. 
The $6 transportation fee is for all students that register for a class, whether they end up dropping the course or not, the $6 transportation fee still applies, as well as a $20 health fee applies to those students taking courses outside of dual enrollment. Dual enrollment students um, do not have that additional $20 health fee. The health fee allows um, students access to our health centers on any one of our campuses, including um, our mental health counselor. Any questions in regards to fees? And Susie already went over at, in the beginning that high school students do not pay tuition in the state of California. So unless that they they're, um, have residency um, that won't allow them to claim California residency, they will not have any fees outside of the, the fees that we just went over on the previous page. Did you wanna go ahead and start covering these, Suze? Sure, so what about textbooks? So with the dual enrollment sections, the high school provides the textbooks because again, it's taught during the high school period, during the day. Um, so it is actually a act that the textbooks have to be provided to the students. When the students are taking the classes on campus or online and you're looking at the traditional concurrent enrollment status of the student, it's looking at the student is responsible for the textbooks. And then again, it's depending on how and the classes are going to be because depending on that, it may be a cost that the, the site can um, take over as well if we're looking at kind of creating, you know, every student wants to take psychology. So we'll try to find the right psychology classes for the students to take that possibly have a zero cost textbook. So we try to work with the coordinators and counselors at the high school to find textbooks that are either zero cost or looking at the online educational resources. So because what most people know or don't know is that textbooks are really the most expensive thing about going to college because you're buying a textbook for $300 and you use it for one semester. And unless it's within your major, you try to sell it back and you get $5 for it. Um, so it's a beautiful system um, for anyone that is not the student the parent or the guardian having to cover those um, the textbooks. So we try to look at alternative ways to, to work with that. And as part of the equity, um, the college is also looking at how to reduce the cost for students um, in regards to materials and textbooks. And for the last few semesters, each term we get uh, a larger list of uh, courses. And not necessarily courses, but more so sections that we offer at the college that have zero cost textbooks. So we can have the same subject, like an English 101 class, and a handful of the sections um, still require books, and the others don't, and it's the same subject, same course number. So um, Susie and I try our best to, um, to find those zero cost textbook courses for our, our students. And then trying to figure out what classes should you take or where should you start. Um, it's always talk with your high school counselor um, to find out what opportunities are available to you, possibly on site or locally. Again, right now, uh, Mount San Jacinto College going into the spring semester, the majority of our classes are online. Um, so we're going to, to look at, at those options. And depending on what the major and career is, we want students to start with the IGETSI pattern and picking classes that will help fulfill general education. And the reason is, is because no matter what happens, you will always have that opportunity um, to take those general ed classes and apply them somewhere else. So even if you're not looking at going to a UC, they work for Cal State, they work for out of state, they work for MSJC, um, uh, associates degrees. Sorry, my mind went like, um, so you're able to utilize all of those. And then it's also knowing if you score a three through five on any AP or any credit level exams, we want to make sure that you're not taking a class in that area or something similar to it until we do an articulation to figure out, um, have you already completed that area? Because we don't want you to duplicate anything. We want you to really get, um, ahead in college, not taking a duplicate class or kind of staying in that same area. 
Are there any questions on the classes? Suze, there's a question in the chat. If you were trying to complete your associate's degree with MSJC, do you do AP classes transfer to MSJC for those requirements? Yes, so it depends on the which class it is. Um, for instance, if it's computer science, the computer science that might not you know line up to the general education. So those classes we would look at your your English, your math, your histories, psychology, the, the general courses, yes, they would. And what we would do is then identify what additional general education classes you would need to take as a result of that. And then uh, we just, we to love to share data. So we look at all these different things. Um, and so again, we're looking at Mount Sinai Central College um, dual enrollment program and concurrent enrollment program, which is what we now call the early college programs. They have between a, an 80 and 90% success rate compared to a 60 to 70% success rate of traditional college students. And the enrollment every semester is, is increasing. And we have over 2,500 students headcount this year alone, and we'll be exceeding the 4,200 student enrollment for the coming year. So it, it is growing because of the opportunity. And again, we're blessed with it, with the COVID situation, because we're able to reach inward into more schools with offering our classes online. So students are able to have that opportunity, um, especially for some of the outlier high schools where it may take 20 minutes to get to the campus. Now you're able to take those classes on campus and have an opportunity that you may not have had before, especially if transportation was, was a concern or an issue in the past. And we always like to look and go over the college terms that way if we're saying something or if there's ever a question, one thing that's really important to understand at the community college is whenever you have a question, do not hesitate um, to try to, to figure it out on your own. If you do the research, you go through it, and you're like, man, I cannot find it. I've looked in the catalog. I've looked in the schedule of classes. I looked on the website and I can't find it. What are they talking about? Ask the question. We do um, prefer that you ask the questions instead of trying to be out there on the island on your own. So again, if we're saying prereqs or pre requisites and you don't understand that that's a class you have to take before another one, ask that question just so that we can help you um, so that you're not struggling because you want to make sure that you're comfortable and ready to, to dive into this exciting opportunity and not feeling like you're hitting barriers or walls all the time. And we, again, we just want to thank you for giving us the time on a Tuesday evening to go over um, the exciting things that, that we're doing. Again, it's a quick overview. We just wanted to um, kind of spur on the interest and open up those questions. Susie and Meredith, thank you so very much. Um, at this time, does anyone have any questions for them? They are truly the experts uh, when it comes to dual enrollment. So now is your chance. Oh, I did want to say, um, can you explain the difference between dual enrollment and concurrent enrollment? Sure, so dual enrollment are courses offered on the high school campus during the regular high school day taught um, by a high school instructor qualified to teach our college level courses. Outside of that is considered concurrent enrollment. So it's the status of a student, it's a high school student taking a college course outside of the dual enrollment program. So any courses that are offered um, on one of our high school campuses after the school day or on one of our college campuses online. And like Susie um, had said earlier, all of our classes at this point, dual or, or um, regular courses are all being offered online for this semester and next semester. We're not sure how those will be offered for the coming school year. And what about, are there any limitations in regards to how many courses a student can take at once? Yes. Or, or so per semester? Right, so um, good question. Um, students, high school students are, are allowed to take up to um, less than 12 units. Once, they, once high school students go over that 12 unit cap, 
um, they're considered a full-time college student at that time and no longer a high school student. And that is for all college credit in one semester. So each term, high school students are allowed to take up to 12 units throughout the state of California. So if you're gonna take eight units with us and six units at a different community college, um, that's going over the cap and the students would be a, a full-time college student at that time and no longer considered a high school student. And for funding purposes, um, high schools don't want to do that. So um, we limit students to, to um, less than 12 units, so 11.99 units, which is typically about three classes. Um, on average, high school students, unless they are in the 4.0 range, we limit that to two courses because um, the high school counselor coordinators as well as um, the college feel like two college courses each semester is a lot in, in combination with the high school classes as well as AP classes. So most high school students take the, the two courses a semester. And then um, the limitations is Dual enrollment is for 11th and 12th grade students where um, concurrent enrollment is open for 9th through 12th. 9th and 10th graders, it's second semester of 9th grade year. Um, and then 9th and 10th graders need a letter of recommendation from uh, an instructor in that same subject area. If the student hasn't taken that subject yet in high school, then we will um, we'll accept a letter from the counselor supporting the student taking the courses being requested. So I just wanna clarify something. So for the ninth and 10th graders, um, does that mean that they, they can just take a class that is um, online right now with MSJC? Correct. It's outside of dual enrollment. The dual enrollment program at, at this time doesn't support um, um, ninth and 10th graders. It's, it's um, geared for 11th and 12th graders. So if a student wants to take a course outside of those dual enrollment courses, then yes, it, it, they could request to take it in the second semester of their ninth grade year. And for ninth and 10th, they still can take two classes they can request to take two classes, but it's up to enrollment services, um, the, the, whether they approve it or not, um, is up to the director of the enrollment services department at MSJC. Okay. But I, I always recommend to students because at the, at the current time, you get all your signatures and you submit your paperwork, you, you, get your transcripts, submit it all um, through our MSJC Student Services Hub. That's online right now is how Enrollment Services is, is accepting paperwork for the spring semester. Um, but there's, there's three lines on the form for you to put in courses that you're requesting to take. And I strongly recommend to all students that you fill in all three of those boxes. Not that you would get approved necessarily to take all three classes, but this is why. If you get approved to take one of the three classes, you will be contacted and told that you've been approved to take one of the three classes requested. Which one do you want us to approve you for? The student will say which class that they want on their list. Now come time to, reg to register for the class. If that section or those, that course is full, and the student can't get into that class, they're gonna want to try for another course that was on their list. So we can swap it out for one of those other classes that, that was requested on, on their form instead of it not being on there and having to go through that approval process again and get a new signed form by all the three different parties and resubmit that for approval through um, enrollment services. So it, it does limit the time um, and then it's, it's easier for us to swap out classes than to go through the entire approval process again. Perfect. And um, let's see, there's a couple of questions in the chat. 
When is the registration deadline for spring? So there is not necessarily a registration deadline. So high school students will be eligible to register in and around the 15th of December for the spring 2021. It's not a, um, a set date, it's tentative at this point. So all high school students will have that date um, and then different times throughout that throughout the, the 15th of December. What I recommend is that if you are planning on taking a class that you do the matriculation process, which is the application orientation and submit your paperwork prior to that date so that you are ready to go come time to register, you can jump online and register for your classes. If you wait too long, those classes could fill up. Um, we do leave for um, the winter break for a week and we are, you know, nobody's, um, nobody's on campus per se. But um, after that, when we come back from break, if you submit your paperwork, the last day, the deadline to register is going to be the day prior to the start of the term. So if paperwork isn't submitted and you haven't gotten approval um, by that date, you won't be eligible to register, or I'm sorry, you won't be eligible to submit paperwork after that, that date. And the, the ter spring term starts the day after the Martin Luther King holiday. And I can't remember offhand the exact date, but it's that Tuesday. Um, okay. Do you need to, okay, so do we have a date for the start of class semester ends for the spring classes? Um, I think you already answered that it was the around December 15th date that you right. mentioned. Right. Yeah, that the red for registration to begin. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, do transcripts need to be submitted? Transcripts need to be submitted with your form. So if, if, it, if you're in progress with your grades, that it's okay. You can submit your transcripts with the, um, with the pending grades on there. You don't have to wait until the final grades are posted. And where do transcripts get sent to to you, one of you two? No, I, I, at this time, it's through our enrollment services hub. It's really easy to find um, that too. It's right on their website um, for enrollment services. There's a link to it. It's pretty clear. So they are working on instructions that we can get out to all of our high school partners to to help assist students in how to. Um, use the hub, how to navigate the hub and submit the submit documents there. Okay, so so the question in the chat is at which point during the registration process are students required to choose the classes in which they choose to take so that those have to go on the form that you're requesting to take classes. So that if, if you're going to be taking classes um, in spring, then it'll be on the concurrent enrollment form. You'll list the courses that you're interested in taking. It does not need to, to be section specific. And the difference between section and course is that section identifies um, the exact days and times that that class meets and who the instructor is. The course number is just the level of, of the course. So if you, it's English 101, we have hundreds of sections of English 101 offered each term. So on the form, it's going to ask for a section number. You do not need to use that, that field. You just need to fill in the, if you're requesting to take English 101, put English 101 in there and fill out the rest of the information, but it does not have to be section specific. So if it proved to take English 101, it's any section that we offer. And I'm just gonna interject real quickly, um, just because we have some parents of students that are freshmen and sophomore and junior students. Um, English 101 isn't um, available to students until their senior year. So you can take other courses, but not that English 101 class yet. Correct, and as well as math, there's limitations on the math co courses um, is currently limited to two seniors as well. Any other questions? Okay, great, I think. Um...
think we're done with questions then. Uh, and they did give everybody their email addresses up at the top of the chat. So if you haven't grabbed that yet, make sure you get that if you have any questions. Um, thank you both so much. Yes, absolutely. And if anybody needs to meet with us, um, we're available to 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 meet and um, set up Zoom meetings with with people that need assistance as well. Great. Thank, thank you. you.